This is the Fearless Agent Podcast, where you learn how to make way more money fast selling real estate with your host, the fearless agent himself, Bob Leffler. And good day to you. This is Bob here at the Fearless Agent Podcast for real estate sales professionals like you, where we explain that every single thing you've been taught by the entire real estate industry is wrong, and you will make lots more money in way less time by doing the exact opposite. So for today's topic, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, time management, uh, getting all the things you have to do. You know, when you're a real estate professional, there is just so much coming at you uh, so if you if you kind of just write down all of the all the things you have to be good at, all you have to do is be great at telephone prospecting. You have to know how to hold a professional open house. You have to know everything there is to know about r- contract writing and all the legal stuff. You have to um, uh, be good at time management. You have to know all about marketing. Uh, you have to know all there is to know about the market, uh, appraisals, uh, all the paperwork, all the technology. So, uh, you know, no big deal, right? There's not much to do. So the, the couple of secrets to, to getting all the things you need done is delegating all the stuff that you don't absolutely have to do and let an assistant do that. And if you don't have an assistant yet, you are your own assistant. Um, And then just two little tricks to get more done in a day than everybody else does. So I'm going to just share some of those little little tricks that I use. So one one of the things, one book I always recommend, there's a book by David Allen, and it's called Getting Things Done. And there is a cult following uh, GTD all over the internet, and there's all kinds of stuff going on with that. But But basically, this guy has figured out a system for productivity, and this is not prioritize your day A, B, C, or any of that baloney. Uh, This is a revolutionary system for getting things done. So I recommend that you buy that book, and it's kind of a complicated system to implement, and I have not fully implemented it by any stretch, but I am... uh, pretty much uh, just about fully implemented it. And then I I do a little tricks to help me get a lot of things done. So I'm going to share those with you today. So the way it works is he's got this little kind of a graph, a little flow chart. And and basically it starts with uh, an in-basket. He talks about mind like water. Okay. So when you go to bed at night, You're constantly thinking, oh, I've got to do this. Oh, I've got to do that. Oh, I forgot to do that. And 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 literally your mind constantly throughout the day when you're awake and when you're trying to go to sleep at night, you're thinking, oh, I forgot to do that. Oh, I've got to do that tomorrow. Oh, I've got to do all this stuff. So that mind like water thing is it's calm and you don't ever have to think about that. And I can honestly say I have achieved that. And it was by reading that book, Getting Things Done. So, so. And, and I'm going to have you separate your deals from this system, okay? So your actual transactions as a realtor uh, f- for when you think about this. So your system, the system requirements for getting things done system are these three things. You need an in-basket, you need a filing cabinet, and you need a calendar, Okay. So all of us have, have a day timer or an, you're using iCal if you're a Mac guy, maybe your Google Calendar or something like that. So the calendar is for scheduled appointments. You've got the in-basket is where everything should go into that. That's the funnel. So any idea that pops in your head, any, uh, any to-do item, you write it on a piece of paper. I happen to like like three by five cards. I literally run my whole business. This whole empire at Fearless Agent is run on three by five cards. And they go into the end basket. And then the filing cabinet is just an alphabetical order. Filing cabinet full of manila folders, my favorite product from the Philippines. Uh, And that's, that's how you run it. So the filing cabinet now the in the in basket is just where everything goes. Okay, so let's say you had a massive uh, project called Clean the Garage, okay? So you would just 
write on a piece of paper, clean the garage, and you would put that in the in the end basket. So in the filing cabinet, it's going to be alphabetical, okay? And then you're going to have some, some files called next action. So that's a do thing, uh, like the next action on any large project. Then you'd have a waiting for file. So waiting for means I need to wait until some other thing happens for that thing to happen. And then ideas or someday, so like a someday maybe I had an idea that maybe I'm going to, you know, write a book about, you know, whatever. And then you've got project files for the, for the projects that have names and you know what they're doing. So the way the, the way the system works is something goes into your end basket and then uh, – and you can download this off the, off the Googles. But it's this little flow chart, but it, but it makes it easy to think through. So something goes into the end basket and then you pull it out and you say, what is it? OK. So that thing says clean the garage. OK. So uh, then you say, is it actionable? Uh, yeah, I could, I could go drop everything and go clean the garage right now. Some things are not actionable uh, at that moment so, uh, or ever. So it would go – if it's not actionable, it would either go in the trash or it would go in the someday maybe folder or it would go in a reference thing. So if it is a uh, – like I pulled up the stats for the market. Um, uh, so maybe I have a reference file for that or maybe it's a book uh, that I'm going to read or something. But it would go on the shelf as a reference book. So. Anything that's not actionable either goes in the trash or it's someday maybe, tickler file, hold for review, something like that, or, or it's a reference thing that you're going to say. I'm going to save this because I might want to look at it later, okay? If it is actionable, then you have to say, what is the very next action that I have to take on that thing? So if it's multiple steps, then it's a project. Uh, and it would go into the project. You'd make a file for that. So clean the garage w would probably be a multiple-step project. Maybe I need to go to the shredding place. Maybe I need to buy some uh, container bins to – I have a very organized garage, by the way. I, I went on Google Maps, and I looked up my address, and then when the Google car drove by, uh, my garage door was open. And I remember thinking, well, thank God. Uh, I've got an organized garage or I would look like some kind of hillbilly or something. So anyway, so you can see how uh, over-organized I am with my little plastic bins in my garage. So the if the project takes planning, then, you know, you would review those for what's the next action. So, so each project would be have a next action. And you can, now the way I do it is I take three by five cards and I write down – all the little steps for everything. So I'm going to be going to another state to give a talk to a group of people I've never talked to. They are going to be realtors. And I'm going to be doing a little thing that I don't normally do. So I'm going to have to create a keynote present or a, you know, like a PowerPoint presentation and write my little talk and figure out what I'm going to say. And then I'm going to have to book the flight and then I'm going to have to book a hotel and I'm going to have to book a rental car and uh, I'm going to have to – actually, there's a thing I might end up doing for my church while I'm in that town. So I'd maybe look up that. You know, I'm going to have to call the pastor of my church and say, hey, do you want me to check on something while I'm there, which I did. So, you know, the, I've done these things. But, you know, it's a big deal. If you're, if you're going to travel, it takes, you know, planning. So this is, you know, for, for me, this is my deals. You know, I get paid for, for going to this place. So when I go there, it, all that stuff has to be done. And then, uh, you know, I, I'm a guy who will buy a backup flight in case the weather's bad on the day I decide to fly because I'm booking it two weeks out and I'm going to have a backup flight. So, you know, and then if I don't use that flight, I want to get my money back. So I have a plan for that. So all these little three by five cards, I've thought it through. So then... If you look at your next action and you say, will it take me less than two minutes to do that? 
So if if you pull something out of your end basket, you say, what is it? Is it actionable? It is actionable, and it will take less than two minutes to do it. Well, then I'm going to do it and then get that out of my head. I don't have to think about it again, and I'm going to throw that 3 by 5 card away. So just do it now. Then, uh, So if I have to get in the car and go somewhere, that's not going to take less than two minutes, and then I'm going to save that for later. Okay, so I'm going to file that. You know, it's going to go into a list. I'll tell you how I do my daily routine, too. If it is not going to take less than two minutes, if it's going to take more than two minutes, you're going to either delegate it, in other words, someone else will do it, or you're going to defer it till later. So let's say it's not actionable uh, or it's going to take more than two minutes. Then I'm going to go, it could go into the waiting file for someone else to do it. Uh, it could go in my calendar. So anything that's going to happen at a specific time on a specific day goes into the calendar. And then there is another little pile, a next actions folder. So that next action folder, those next actions are going to be prioritized, the ones that are less than two minutes. Well, I will, I'm here to tell you, you can get an amazing amount of stuff done. So I don't know how David Allen thought up this system, but it has completely revolution, revolutionized my life. And uh, I'll give you another little thing that I do. There are certain things that you do every day, okay? So every single day, certain things happen. Um, or maybe not every day, but every week, certain things happen. So I write on a 3 by 5 card. I've got a stack of 3 by 5 cards in a binder clip. And every day, I pull out those those three by five cards, and I have two piles. This is going to happen today, and this is not going to happen today. So then I take all the stuff that's got to happen today and, like, go to the gym, let's say. That would be one of those things. Um, that I go to the gym every day, okay? There's no evidence of that. Um, my producer, uh, Ramon, looks at me. He goes, this guy doesn't go to the gym. And I look at him and I say, this guy never goes to uh, get a makeover. You know, but that's okay. That's all right. We are who we are. So, but I go to the gym every day. But I don't go to the same time every day. It's just a thing that I need to have happen before I go to sleep. So it's not a, a, a calendar thing. So uh, uh, I have a very glamorous lifestyle. So I have a three by five card that has the word poop on it because I have a dog and somebody has to pick up the poop. And I do that because, you know, it gives me a little break. And I can do that while I'm talking to my coaching students. <laughs> you know, I can do, I'm a multitasker. But that has to happen. Now, it doesn't have to happen every day. But if I look out the window and there's poop, I go, oh, I got to pick that up. There's, you know, maybe like a Facebook thing that I, a post I do every day. There's uh, videos that I shoot. Uh, not every day, but, you know, once a week. So all of those things. And then so uh, these are the ones that are going to happen today. These are the ones that are not going to happen today. And then I just prioritize those things in the order that they're going to happen. So there's certain things that have to happen every day. And then I prioritize those three by five cards. And when one of them is done, like going to the bank would be one. Going to the dry cleaners would be another one. Packing for a trip. So I've got one that says pack. I've got one that says dry clean. I've got one that says bank. I've got one that says poop. Um, so uh, anything like that. So just make a 3 by 5 card for all those things. And the thing that's great about 3 by 5 cards is you can reshuffle the deck. You know, there's no computer system that works as good as 3 by 5 cards. There, there never will be. So I can reshuffle the deck very easily. I can take that 3 by 5 card with me. Uh, grocery store is one. So if I'm going to go to the grocery store, I would look at the other 3 by 5 cards, and there's one that says bank. Well, I will go to the bank while I go to the gro grocery store. If there's another one that says do something else while I'm out, I'll grab that dry clean. I'll take that one with me. So then I put them on the front seat of my car, and then I figure out the loop route so I'm not driving back and forth, and then way more stuff gets done in less time. So you've got all these little things that have to happen in your life that have nothing to do with your business. And then what time of day would be the time to do those things? So let's take dry clean, bank, and uh, what was the other one I said that I was going to drive to? Grocery. So if I'm going to do grocery store run 
and a bank run and a dry clean run, when would I not do that if I'm a real estate professional? Well, I would not do it during my prospecting time. That's when I would not do it. I would do it during my lunch time. So at noon, when I'm done prospecting, I will grab those cards, get in my car, and go to lunch. So where do I go to lunch every day? I go to the lunch at the same place every day. I have the same, I eat the same thing every day. So I go to Randy's Diner where, because I'm a celebrity there and I'm going to see all my friends there. So when I go there, I'm uh, off the grid. My phone is not with me. I'm either with a friend of mine. Usually when I walk into Randy's Diner, I see somebody I know and I sit down and, and eat lunch with them. I'm not looking at my phone. They're not looking at their phone and we have a nice, easy uh uh, you know, fun lunch while we're looking around the restaurant at all the people that are typing at each other on their little phones. So then I get done with that. I get in the car. On the way back, I hit the grocery store. I hit the dry cleaner. I hit the bank. And I'm done. And it's all done very quickly. And now that's out of my way. Now I get back to work and it's only work. And I'll get back on the phone and prospect if I'm a realtor. So just little, little things like that can make all the difference. So at Fearless Agent, what I want to do, my dream for you, is to make you dramatically increase the dollars per hour that you earn. So if I can dramatically increase the dollars per hour that you earn, if you're making $400 an hour, uh, you know, that's an $800,000 a year job if, if you could work 40 hours a week. The problem is realtors don't put in enough hours, and if they really look at the hours they're putting in, they're not doing work. They're doing dry cleaning. They're doing grocery. They're doing all stuff like that. And they're doing it at the wrong time of the day. So you've got to block out those parts of the day to make it work. So one thing you always should do is do lunch right at noon. The rest of the world does that. So when you're at lunch at noon, the other people are at lunch at noon, like the title company people, the lenders, they're not calling you they're because they're at lunch. So if you go to lunch when other people are working, they're going to be calling you while you're at lunch and you're not going to connect with them. So go to lunch at noon. Eat dinner at 5. Do your listing appointments, uh, buyer appointments, and investor appointments at either 2.30 in the afternoon or, six, or 7 p.m., not 6. So that way you could have lunch, go on a listing appointment, get a listing, make $10,000, then eat dinner at 5, go on a 7 p.m. listing appointment. You're not hungry and cranky. Make another $10,000. And then you can do two listings in one day. Now, if you do a 4 p.m. listing appointment uh, or a 6 p.m., you can only do one in a day. And then, you, and, and then the eating thing becomes a problem. So if, if you can, now some people have special situations with, you know, wives, kids, pets. I know how it is. Uh, but if you can, always eat lunch at noon, always eat dinner at 5, all your appointments are at 2.30 or 7 p.m., and the morning is always just prospecting. And that's, that's going to make you a lot, a lot more money per hour. So, by the way, if any of what we talk about on this podcast makes sense to you, if you are earning less selling real estate than you wish you were, if you are open to the idea of having some help with that, we would like to help you. So if you'd like to learn more, you can always call me directly on my cell phone anytime at 480-385-8810. And we'll just see if you and what you're trying to do and what we do at Fearless Agent, if it would even be a good fit for you. So again, it's 480-385-8810. I love talking to realtors. I don't want you to think you're bothering me. Please don't email me. Or please don't email or text ever if you're a real estate professional. Only bad things can happen from that. Always call. Use the telephone. We're in sales, 480-385-8810. If for, if for whatever reason, currently you cannot afford coaching, but you wish you could, please visit fearlessagent.com. Watch the webinar. Uh, it's about 45 minutes long. Take lots of notes. Go to the video training page. My guarantee to you is those free videos are going to be better coaching for free than you would pay any other coach any amount of money for. And 
If you ever have a question, you can always call me because we want to help you for free so that you can afford our coaching as soon as possible. So we're here for you one way or the other. Go to fearlessagent.com. So the, the time management component to real estate includes two things. One is eliminating all of the stuff that really does not have to be done at all. Focus only on the highest dollar per hour activities and then plug it into the right hours of the day. And I would recommend using the, uh, if not just the three by five card system that I use, and maybe you have a different system that you like better for to-do list or something like that, but I really do like the three by five cards because I can pr prioritize them instantly. I don't need electricity to do it. Uh, I can wad it up and throw it away and get it out of my life. And there's something uh, pleasing about wadding up a piece of paper and throwing it and getting it out of my life like I've accomplished that thing. The other thing I, I would like to talk about is what you should be keeping track of. Um, you know, people keep track of too many things. There's all these people on the – realtor websites, they're selling these tracking sheets and all this complete baloney. Um, I only need you to keep track of really two things. One is uh, the number of hours that you – these are the questions I ask people that I coach. What are the number of hours that you prospect per day? And then the other is the number of listing appointments that you schedule. Now, if you focus on buyers, like some of my agents do, they say, I hate listings, I hate sellers, I don't want to do that, it's just not fun for me. Um, I'd rather work with buyers, that's more fun. So if buyers is more fun for you, I still coach you, that's no problem. But we have a different program for that. Same program, different uh, business model, I would say. So then, but most people that call me, say, I'm doing too many buyers now. I'd like to do either none or way less because the buyer paycheck is so low on dollars per hour than it is with sellers. So, But if you're focused on sellers, then you want to keep track of two things, the number of hours that you're prospecting, full complete hours per day on average per week, let's say, and then the number of listing appointments that you schedule. And those are the two main things. So if you know the number of hours that you're prospecting and the number of listing appointments that you're scheduling, we can figure out the dollars per hour that you're earning and you'll be shocked at uh, how much it is. It's, it's quite shocking. So if you additionally want to keep track of some more stuff, keep track of the number of listing appointments that you attend and then the number of listings that you take. And then I would each week rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10 on your focus on time management and your focus on prospecting. And then celebrate the little successes that you've had. So I like every fearless agent to just kind of know their numbers. But here's what I don't want you to keep track of. Don't keep track of the number of dials that you made. Don't keep track of the number of contacts. A contact to me would be a live conversation with a human who owns a home. Uh, you don't need to know that number because the number – you can't control that. You can control how many listing appointments you schedule a week, but you can't control the number of people that pick up the phone and say hello. So you can't control uh, whether the people who pick up the phone and say hello actually want to sell their house. You can't control – um, how nice or sane or smart the people are who did pick up the phone. So there's a lot of things that are not in your control. But what is in your control is how nice and sane and smart you are when you're on the phone. And you can control your skills. You can control your schedule. And you can control your systems. And if you have the fearless agent skills and the fearless agent schedule and the fearless agent systems, you're going to make a lot more money per hour. But ultimately, the thing you actually can control is the number of hours you put in. So, you know, there's a uh, false belief that we all have the same number of hours every day. That really isn't true. Some people have more hours in their day than you do. And some people have less than you do. So if you have 
um, a special needs kid or you have multiple kids, which I never recommend, uh, if you have um, a uh, ailing spouse or parent or you're a, you do volunteer work uh, that you weren't able to find your way to get out of, you know, like I do, um, then you don't, you don't have as many hours. So if because I am committed to a couple of volunteer jobs that I do, which I like, they're fun. Uh, it's a blessing in my life. Other people wouldn't like it. They'd think it was weird maybe, but I like it. And then I'm going to do that thing. So I'm going to have to be much more productive on the hours that I spend when I am at work. And, uh, and I'm not going to work weekends because I don't do that. So that's the um, – and when I say not work weekends, I do talk to you guys because I don't consider that work. I consider that the rewards of the work I do. So – if you are a real estate agent and you say, I'm not going to work Saturday or Sunday like I did when I was a real estate agent, I never took a call, never took an email, never texted on, on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, the customer got handled because I had assistants that took care of that or a partner or somebody. Um, but I'm going to dramatically increase the dollars per hour that you earn. That's my goal for you. So I don't really want to dictate how many hours that you work. Although I do notice that realtors tend to not work as many hours as they should. I don't know why that is. I think it's because the industry tells us a lie. But when you own your own business, you should be working long hours, and, and not because you have to, but because you want to. But you probably do have to if you want to make the big bucks like I want you to make. So, so, when, if, so I, would, I would recommend trying out a couple of things. Try the 3 by 5 card system. Read the book, Getting Things Done and try to implement that and try to make every day look identical. So here's the, here's the, um, the secret to time management. I used to work, I used to manage a um, barbecue restaurant, I tell this story. And in that barbecue restaurant, they would uh, you know, deliver the meat at, at a certain time of the day. The uh, potato chip guy would come at a certain time every day. We would you know, cook in the morning, we would clean in the evening. The lunch rush happened. The dinner rush happened. And it was a very successful restaurant. And people were lined out the door for both lunch and dinner. And um, so what I never did was say, hey, gang, uh, what we're going to do today is run the restaurant like realtors run their business. And we're going to, you know, uh, cook in the evening and clean in the morning and do everything different. You know, that, that would never happen. So if every day is identical in your business, you're going to find that it's very comforting. And if you can just wake up in the morning, do your morning routine, go to your three by five cards like I do. Uh, I have a morning meeting that I go to every morning at 7 a.m. I eat breakfast right after that at 8 a.m. And then I go home and I hit the three by five card so I don't have to think. I literally don't have to think. So I've got a calendar that tells me I have an appointment tonight. At 7 p.m. across town, I have an appointment tonight. Then I've got the three by five, five cards telling me where I have to be. Uh, today, I had to do the podcast. So that, that happens at a certain time. So everything's going to happen. I'm going to get as much done as I can during the, the day um, because I can help more people. Uh, it's not about making money. It's about helping more people. So if you forget the money and just focus on helping more people, you'll, the, money, the money will happen and just be insanely more productive every day. And that's what I want you to do. By the way, uh, I want to thank all of you for joining us on the podcast. Please do visit us at fearlessagent.com. You can always call me directly at 480. This is my cell phone. 480-385-8810, toll-free, day or night. Please do give us a five-star review of this podcast on iTunes. Send your friends to Fearless Agent. If you know any um, real estate agents that are earning less than they wish they were and you think they're open to the idea of having some help, if they do exactly what I tell them to do, they are going to get rich. So you can visit us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Instagram or Instagram. I don't care. Either one of those is fine. But until next week, always do what all fearless agents do. Have fun 
be humble, but most of all, be fearless. Thanks, gang. Oh.